Time. Thank you. So, welcome again for this uh, second part of the of these lectures on mesoscopic superconductivity. So yesterday we work uh, on building uh, Andrea bound state, which are these localized states that form in very generic weak links. So when we have two superconductors with different phases, and they, they, these, due to this phase frustration, there are these Andrea bound states that form, which have an energy which depends on the on the phase difference between the two electrodes and which uh, have an energy which is uh, very well inside the, the superconducting gap, delta in this case. So today I will show how we can use these uh, fermionic states to make uh, a qubit or a two-level system. And this is a two-level system which is uh, different from all what you have listened to today and uh, yesterday also by, by Paul about superconducting qubits because it's not based on macroscopic degrees of freedom which are the phase and the charge in a superconducting resonator but on microscopic degrees of freedom which are these fermionic states in the weak link okay so as I, as I was saying so we have these two this very elementary so let's to, to, for all this uh, the explanation I just take the most like the simplest case, so we have two superconductors with different phases. We have a very simple weak link. In this case, this is just a single channel and very short. So the, the, the junction here is a very short, short junction. In this case, we know that these Andrea states develop and the density of states looks like this. So in the ground state, all the states below the Fermi, the Fermi energy are occupied. In particular, this uh, last, this uh, what is called when this, this Andrea state which, which, which has an energy uh, which is uh, uh, close to minus delta. So to, to, to understand tunnel spectroscopy, yes, uh, yesterday I explained that there are excitations which are additions of quasi-particles. So these quasi-particles can be either we add electrons to the system or we remove electrons which is equivalent to add a hole. In both cases these are quasi-particles. So in, the, in one case we add an electron which occupies this excited state and this costs an energy which is Ea. Or in the other case, we remove this electron, creating a hole, and this also costs an energy, Ea. These are the kind of, ex of excitations that we can do, for example, with the tunnel probe. So we come with a tunnel probe, and then we can just, for example, add or remove uh, electrons. But there is another type of excitation, which is the one that we can do by sending light or sending photons. So if we come, for example, with a photon, and if we make the, the frequency of the photon or the energy H times the frequency of this photon to match exactly twice the Andre energy, we can just create this, this excitation which is uh, create a hole in this uh, uh, occupied state and occupy the excited state. This, in, as you can see here, we are creating two quasi-particles because we are creating one hole in the lower state here and one electron in the excited state. So this excitation costs two times Ea, and this is the excitation which has in, in which the, the, this state at the end has the same parity as the starting state because here the ground state is, is, is even, has an even number of electrons, and here also there is an even number of excitations present in the system. In the middle there is this state which has odd parity. And what is important is that photons can only couple the ground state with the excited state because light, when you send light, you cannot create or destroy quasi-particles. You have to conserve the parity. So all what I'm going to, to say about uh, uh, coupling this Andrea state with microwave photons are relate, I, how we relate this ground state with the excited state. Okay, so let's see what just to, to sum up. So we have ground state, this odd state which is the presence of an extra quasi-particle and is a state which has a different parity and we have this excited state in which we create two quasi-particles. So sometimes this is, this is going from this ground state to here is equivalent to, of saying that we promote a Cooper pair to go from the ground state to the excited state. This is, if you want to keep this in mind, but these are special Cooper pairs which are these Cooper pairs forming this uh, and occupying the Andre bound state. Okay? So you can imagine uh, if we want to, to do 
some, uh, some excitation of the system, we need some technique or some capability to distinguish in which of these states is the system. Yes? I'm confused, so you're calling uh, two green boxes, meaning two excited states with a changed parity? Yes, there are two. Or actually two or four, so you also have three. Yes, in, 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 in fact, yes. In, in fact, uh, uh, these Andrew states are spin degenerate. So uh, there are two possibilities because there are, there are two odd states, one which is sp spin up and the other one which is spin down. Because these are states for a single quasi particle, so it can't, has a spin. Well, so you have two excitations or you have four excitations? No, two, two, op two possible odd states. And, yes, uh, question. You usually, yes. Thank you. Uh, usually for uh, excitation with photons, you have some selection rules. Yes. The uh, energy is not the only condition. You need yes, to, to keep the parity and to have a matrix element. Yes. I will show ah, okay. that it's possible okay. to have a matrix element. So, so to prove this, we need some, some way to detect these transitions. De to detect these transitions have, have been implemented with many techniques. Today I will just explain one of these techniques which is based on circuit quantum electrodynamics setup. This, 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 this idea, I, I think that in 2004, when there was this paper by Alexander Blay and, and Balraf, it was like, a, I think, a, some revolution in the field because a, a lot of uh, people working on condensed matter and mesoscopic physics start to do uh, experiments with microwaves. And the idea, so this is uh, the very well-known experiments in Rydberg atoms done in, uh, by Arosh in, uh, in Paris. And uh, this experiment is, is the following. So I will spend like five minutes ex explaining what this is, and then you will understand easily what, what we do. So here in, in, uh, in uh, this light blue, what you see is a microwave resonator. This is a coplanar waveguide resonator. So the idea is that here you have aluminum, or, or some metal which has, a, which got in the, you see if it's a superconducting uh, element, it's better because it has zero losses. And the idea is that you can imagine that el the electromagnetic field just propagates in this line as if it were uh, a coaxial cable just built in a plane. So you can imagine that this is the, 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 the soul of the coaxial cable and these two are the ground planes. Okay? So you, have, you can have electromagnetic waves propagating here. In particular here, this in, in instead of having a continuous line, there are interruptions here. And this, going, this is going to build some standing wave in this resonator. And these standing waves, if you, are, if you design correctly, can have microwaves frequency. So frequency in the gigahertz, from 3 giga to 10 gigas, etc. The idea is that the, the electromagnetic field at resonance, so at resonance of this microwave resonator, you can have, for example, here in gray, it's just the profile of the, electro, the electric field in particular. In this case, the electric field is uh, very large at this point, and in, at this point there is this structure, and this structure for these papers was a transmon qubit. So this is this was the way to couple this artificial atom, which is this artificial atom, which is the qubit, to couple this with this cavity. So all the physics of these guys were working for a long time in coupling, so the, the coupling of radiation with matter, so the coupling with an atom with a cavity was implemented here by using circuit. My, uh, using my, uh, microwave circuits, okay? So this is, essential, this is essentially the ideas of circuit quantum electrodynamics and I'm going to explain how, how this works. In, this part in our particular case, instead of having a transmon qubit, we want to put our Andreev qubit, okay? Our Andreev system. So, Sorry, no. yes? What is the rest of the circuit? So no, here, here, just he, this is a, like a, a, a circuitary representation. So this transmi transmission line, you can represent this as inductance and capacitance, inductance and capacitance in series, and you can solve the equation for uh, electromagnetic field propagating. In this case, this is the telegraph telegraphic equation, uh, and you can find the propagating wave and the standing waves of the system. Okay. So. What we do is the following. So you just take the last image and just we, I, I will explain the following. So this is our, our atomic constant, our atomic constriction. And this atomic constriction, there is no cable here, no cable at all. This is just the constriction in an aluminum loop, okay? 
the loop, we use the loop to impose the face, and we, of course, we, everything we fabricate in a plastic stuff in order to, uh, to bend and arrive to an atomic size contact. And we place this loop at the end of this meander. So what this is? So here it is it's the same, but this is a longer, a longer line. So this meander here is this coaxial cable. And at the end of this coaxial cable, there is a short circuit. So just uh, it's, it's shorted. So in order that at resonance, there is a maximum of the current, a maximum of the current around this loop. The idea is the following. So we have this microwave resonator, which has a frequency of 10 gigahertz. This is fabricated in niobium. And everything is operated at millikelvin temperature. So this is a lambda over 4 resonator because at, the, at, at resonance, the, if you take a look at the profile of the current as a function of this position, you get that the current is zero here, and at the end, it's maximum. Okay, so this is a lambda over 4, so a, a quarter of the wavelength. So at this position where the current is maximum, we, cap, we have a coupling, a mutual inductance coupling with this loop. Okay, so it's just a way, so we have here our superconducting loop with this atomic contact instead of a Josephson junction. So it's a special Josephson junction. And we can impose this phase using this, uh, this by threading this flex. So this is essentially the device. The thing is the following. So if you, uh, you can, for example, if, if there is, if there were be no, no, no uh, superconducting loop here. You can send photons. You, this is a this is BNA. This is a vector network analyzer. But the idea is simple. So you send some power, some photons at different frequencies, and you measure the the photons that are reflected. And all the information about the system is is uh, stored in this uh, reflection coefficient. And you do as electromagnetism. You measure the reflection coefficient. So this apparatus measure reflection coefficient. This is S. Uh, one one here at the function of the frequency, which measures the power out versus the power in. Okay, if we measure the amplitude of this reflection coefficient as a function of the frequency, we observe that everything this is in, in dB, so everything is just being uh, reflected until at some frequency there is absorption. So this is the the frequency, which is the frequency of this resonator, and here it's 10.13 uh, uh, something. Okay, around 10 gigahertz. We can fit this resonance and obtain from here the, the internal quality factor and the coupling, the, the total quality factor, which is also uh, depends on the coupling. So this, this coupling with the external environment. So let, let, let's keep in mind this dip, okay? This absorption of, of photons at some frequency. And we, I will show a color map in which we follow this as, a, as, as we push with our pusher uh, to form our atomic contact. So this, is, so this is in black, this is the dip. So in color, this is a, you can imagine there is a dip here. And now I'm starting to opening. So I'm starting to, to push with this, uh, with this pusher in order to bend the substrate. So what happens? At some point, the, well, nothing happened during some moment. And at some point, there is some, some change in the resonance. Why is this change? Because when, when this, is, uh, when this contact is very closed, so you can imagine you start with something which is almost metallic, so you have just a, 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 a small inductance due to, this, uh, to the, old induct, the geometric inductance. But as, we, as, you, go, as, as you go to, uh, to a contact size uh, junction here, you start to have a, a, the, the Josephson inductance, which is important, and this go, is modifying the frequency. So the resonator frequency is modified by the presence of this element here. This is just what you have to, to keep in mind is the re frequency of my resonator is modified by, the, by the, the presence of this atomic contact here. At the end, if we just uh, open completely, is we get the frequency of the bare resonator because if this is completely open, there is no current that can be induced due to the mutual coupling. Don't, it's like uh, having just open here. And this is the, the, the frequency of the bare resonator. You can see also that the quality factor improves because the, the fact that you are coupled also induce some, uh, some, uh, some, some additional relaxation mechanism, okay? which I'm, I'm not going to discuss, but just to show you the difference between being, being coupled and not being coupled. Okay? This is what is here in, the, in this uh, square. I'm not going to show all the, 
all what we do to, to, to try to look for the, 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 the good position, but this is essentially the region where we find the atomic size uh, content. Okay. See, here, as you, can, as you can imagine, we have no cable, so we are uh, completely uh, uh, a burglar. Can be, uh, uh, we can, uh, blind, exactly, blind in English. So, since this is a, like a school, I, just, I prepared uh, some slides to, to explain how we obtain the, the Hamiltonian of the circuit, and I'm going to base much, uh, I'm going, going to say uh, much of the things that Paul explained yesterday. So, first we have this resonator, okay? Okay, so you, you, the first thing you can say to me, your, your system is a, some, something which is completely continuous. So you have a, a transmission line which you have a, a very complicated stuff, which is micrometers long. So where is your inductance and your capacitance, okay? So what is important is close to resonance, even this, trans transition, this transmission line and this uh, continuous resonator can be just described as an LC circuit with some effective inductance and some effective capacitance, okay? This inductance and this capacitance characterize just the, the if you want, the, the, the current and the, and the charges which are just being uh, alternatively uh, uh, store, storing the energy, one, uh, so one among them, so the, from the electric field to the, to the, from the electric field to the current, to the magnetic field. So, <coughs> So what we do is just we follow the recipe that was explained to us yesterday. So we use the quantization rule for a circuit. So in this case, we just go to a limit in which this microwave resonator is going to behave quantum mechanically. And in this case, you know, the problem of an LC circuit can be just if you introduce the correct uh, A and A dagger, so uh, lowering and, and, and uh, diminishing opera creation and destruction operators, you can just uh, map this Hamiltonian into something which is H, uh, H nu uh, or HF times A dagger A. So this is the Hamiltonian of an harmonic oscillator which we know very well. So this, this harmonic oscillator has some, uh, some energy levels uh, which depends on the number of uh, Quantum, so quantum, uh, quanta of uh, photons that we have in the system. So zero photon, one photon, two photon, etc. And what is important is that even if this is a quantum uh, oscillator, even at zero photon there are fluctuations. So the current and the and the, uh, the, the, the the charge and the phase are fluctua have fluctuations in the system, and this is uh, something special which is is going to be uh, important for the for the coupling with this uh, Andreev system. So this is one part of the circuit. The other part of the circuit is the Andreev qubit. So as I was saying, the only states that are going to be coupled by photons are the ground state and the excited state with two quasi-particles because we have to conserve the number of, uh, the, we have to conserve the parity of the system. So we start, we have this ground state, the excited state, we have some energy of the transition and this energy is two twice Ea, okay? And this is going to be for us our Hamiltonian of this uh, two-level system, which is ju we are just going to write with this sigma z matrix, which is just uh, minus uh, the energy of the of the of the qubit over two and plus the energy of the qubit of the two. Okay. You can ask here uh, what is this uh, what is this line this green line? Of course, this is the the energy of the odd states, and these odd states are not coupled with photons. So I, I'm not going to consider them now for this uh, circuit QED setup, but they are going to be they are going to appear in the experiments. I, I'm going to show you this. So this this resonator is coupled to this uh, Andre, uh, Andre, to this superconducting loop, and due to this mutual coupling, this phase here is not only determined by this magnetic flux, but there are also fluctuations. And these fluctuations come from the fluctuations here in this inductance. So you have fluctuations here, we depend on the zero point fluctuations and some current operator. And these fluctuations are going to create fluctuations in this system, and uh, these phase fluctuations have to be taken into account. This is the complicated way to say it. The simple way to say is that our, the, the complete Hamiltonian of the problem is a harmonic oscillator, the qubit, and there is some term which is going to couple with some G parameter, some G which is characterizing the coupling between the two. This is, this is going to couple, the, to couple current here in the resonator and some excitations in the qubit. This is a standard 
This is a standard Rabi Hamiltonian, and if the if the appropriate uh, frequency co conditions are, are are taken into account, this can be just written as the James Cumming Hamiltonian. So I will explain the James Cumming Hamiltonian. So we have again, so we have the unperturbed harmonic oscillator. We have the the unperturbed the isolated two-level system here, and this term is going to so there are there is, there is this product of operator a dagger sigma minus and a sigma plus. What this is doing? This is just an exchange of excitations. We can transform a quantum of, of a photon here of the of this harmonic oscillation into an excitation. So destroy a photon here and create an excitation excitation in the two-level system, or the other way. So go from the excited to the ground state and create a photon in the resonator. So they this is just saying that we can exchange. Uh, excitations between uh, between two. Let's uh, let's see how, how this how, what this gives. So, if we have the un let's let's consider first the, the un first the uncoupled system. So the energy of our qubit is changing. So what I, I'm showing here is the frequency as a function of delta. The only thing that depends on delta is the energy of the qubit, the, the energy of the transition between because the Andrew states depend on the phase. So. This is very close to phase equal pi, where the transition has a minimum. Okay, and the idea is that this, this the frequency of our qubit is changing with the phase, and this in, in magenta is the frequency of the resonator, which does not depend on the phase at all. So if the syst if the, both systems are uncoupled, we have these these stairs. These are the famous stairs. So the, the idea is that we can have for the tensoral product between the two states, we have either we are in the zero, one, two, three number of photons in the oscillator, so going up in this ladder, or we can be either in the ground state or, or in the excited state of the system. This is a standard, uh, so this characterizes all the possible states. But now we have to include the fact that we are coupled. So if we are coupled, there are two effects. So if we are just at this point, so we are just at the resonant condition, so the condition where the frequency of the of the of the harmonic oscillator and the frequency of the qubit are essentially the same. So we just have this these uh, two levels are uh, have the same energy. What happens is there is a due to this g term there is an hybridization. So at exa exactly at this point there is an anti-crossing, and there is no more. Cavi there is no more cavity and two-level system. There is a hybrid system which is half cavity, half uh, half uh, qubit. Okay. So, for example, what happens when so as as so I, I I come back to the experiment. So we are sending photons at some frequency, and we measure the reflected photons. So in this case, this is the axis of the photons that we we send here, and we are measuring this uh, amplitude of the reflection coefficient. So we get this dip. And as we and this axis is again this is the phase, okay? So in principle, if the system were completely uncoupled, we should see just something which doesn't depend on phase at all, because the resonator doesn't change with the with the phase we are using with the with the, the magnetic uh, with the coil. So the fact that there is an Andrea state coming here, which I, I'm not showing because we, we are we are not exciting this transition the fact that there is this coupling with something here makes an anti crossing so this is the way we are blind but we are not so blind because we are we just go to a condition where we see that we we find anti crossings and when we find anti crossings we know that we, there are andre states which are crossing the resonator okay so from this we can just using the james cami model using these simple ideas where we have these states which are g and one photon plus minus excited state zero photon which has this exchange of excitations we can just find out which is the coupling g in megahertz so the coupling between our two level system and our our cavity and we can also fit a, a transmission for the Andrev state which is crossing here which is 0 0.9922 I, I will come back to this in, in a second yes can you do spectroscopy then the photon number is limited to 0 and 1 or it can also go higher yeah so so we to to be sure that this is uh, working uh, correctly 
we, for this measurement, you, go, you have to go to very few photons, so it's between zero and one. So this, the measurement of anti-crossing are very sensitive to the number of photons. If you, this is completely right, if you put a lot of power to measure, then of course you are going to, popul to, to populate uh, higher levels in this ladder, and then this, this image is not correct anymore. So you have to include all these levels. In particular, the anti-crossing just washed out a bit because you have many contributions for many states. Okay, so there is another in very interesting limit, which is the uh, a limit which is called dispersive limit, and it is dispersive limit allows to state readout. This is very like almost uh, all the people operating uh, superconducting qubits use this procedure, and the idea is the following: so you have a cavity. But instead of being here, where there is a resonant anti, an anti-crossing, you you are you, you place your qubit very far away from the resonance. So you 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 match the condition that the distance between the qubit frequency and the resonance is much larger than your coupling g. Okay, under this condition, the only effect of this term is to dress the state. So you go to an image where all the states are just dressed like this. And the frequency, if you, if you know, before we were the, with these gray lines, and now we have these black lines, which are the new perturbed states. And these perturbed states, in, the, in this case, what, what, uh, just, just to summarize, you find two, two things. So if we are in the ground state of the system, the frequency of the harmonic oscillator, so the, the oscillator is still harmonic, but it has a frequency which is shifted by a quantity which is called chi. And this chi is g squared, so the coupling, divided by the difference of the frequency. So this quantity is very small. As you can see, the, the shift is very small. But it, it, it is enough to distinguish be be between being in the ground state, where the cavity is displaced by plus chi, and in the excited state, when the resonator is displaced by minus chi. So the way it, it, it works is the following. So I send photons, OK? And I measure the photons which are reflected. I have I have this dip, but this dip now the frequency is going to depend whether I'm in the ground state, in the excited state. So in the ground state I have a, sh a shift by chi. If I am in the excited state I have a shift by minus chi. And if I'm in the odd state I c I have no shift because I, I I have no coupling in this case. Uh, essentially, because in this odd state, I cannot, uh, well, as I said, I cannot couple with the, with the system when it's, there is in the odd state. So here I show not only the amplitude of the reflection coefficient, I, al I also plot the phase. And there is something very useful, which is to put this in this complex plane where I, s I, I just plot the real part of the signal and the imaginary part. This is almost, uh, in general, this is called I signal, so in phase, and Q signal, which is in quadrature. So this is the IQ plane representation. And in, the, in this representation, at resonance, I can be either in the ground state, which is a point here, either in the odd state, which is a point here, or in the excited state, which is in the point here. In the experiment, as you will see, these are, there is some uh, there, there is some, uh, not, not just a point, but there are fluctuations and there, there is some, of course, some experimental noise which makes that this ground state is essentially a, like a cloud of, of, uh, of points around here. The excited state is also a cloud and odd state. The important thing when you design these experiments is to make this, so what is the important parameter? Is the coupling. So you design your coupling in order to be able to distinguish between these three possibilities. So, so here what I, I shown an experiment showing uh, what is two, what is called two-tone spectroscopy. So what what we do is the following. So we we send the photons with a drive pulse at some frequency which is here uh, called f1. Okay, these are the photons that we use to excite transitions in the system. And then, after applying this tone, we measure the state of the system. And since we can distinguish be between, between the possible state of the system, or we can distinguish if the resonator moved, we can know if something happened when we send these photons. So this is shown here. This is the beam value of I, so the real part of the reflected co the reflection coefficient. This is, this is the color, and this is shown 
as a function of the photons that we send to excite transitions and the phase difference. And you can see that if I'm here, nothing happens. So if I am at this phase, nothing happens, nothing happens, until I arrive to a certain frequency, and then I observe a, sh a change in the resonator. Okay? So I'm always measuring changes in my resonator due to the coupling to this Andrea system. From this, from this uh, measurement, you can just uh, plot the expected uh, transition uh, frequency, and you can fit very well with this precision. You can fit the transmission of, the, of your uh, channel, and you can also well, using uh, some value for the superconducting gap. But you can do more than this. For example, you can just, so I, as I was saying here, there is anti-crossing. But I can, I can be at this point where I have dispersive uh, readout, OK? So if I am at, Sorry, yes? Why do you assume it's a single time? Uh, yes, this is a very good